Jason. This is Triple S. This is episode number four. It's a little long overdue. I originally thought I'd be able to pop out these videos once a week, but I'm extremely busy, especially this time of year with all the upcoming eggs and babies that I'm expecting. As you may already know, I do have albino Burmese python eggs in the incubator, so yay. And uh, I'm expecting green tree python eggs very soon. I thought they would have been here already, but Medusa is holding out on me. She's trying to drive me crazy. I don't know. She's like on day 22. They usually lay between 14 and 21 days. So I'm just like anxiously running up and down the stairs like every few hours checking. No, she's not laying any eggs right now. She will probably wait till I go to work so I miss it. You know, that's kind of how it usually works for me. But, um, you know, let's wish her a lot of luck. Good luck to you, Medusa. Hey! Hurry it up back there! Crank up those eggs! Chop, chop! Sorry. Okay. Couldn't hurt. Just a little pep, okay? And I'm also expecting a red-tailed baby soon. Um, probably be a couple months for those. But, um, everything's going pretty good. I have also been working on the Albano Burmese Python cages. I started them at the end of last summer, and I thought they'd be done in like a month. It was a lot more work than I had anticipated because I kept changing my mind. I had this vision, then I had a different vision, and then I spoke to this dealer and spoke to this heat panel guy and kept changing my mind, but, you know, it's, it's almost finished, at least one part of them. I'm making two cages that are like 10 feet long and 3 feet wide and almost 2 feet tall. I've almost got the first one done. The second one is the frame is built and everything. Still got to put in the walls and insulate it. But uh, the first one should be up and active in the reptile room hopefully next weekend. All I have left to do is put in the vinyl flooring and uh, the background paper for the walls and attach the doors. So almost done with that one. It's just I was really hoping it would be done today. Started pouring down rain. The paint went and dry and I couldn't go further. So anyhow... Hopefully, next weekend, I'll have a major update for that. And um, I just want to thank you all for watching my videos. When I started making a couple videos, I thought this would be cool to have a video of an emerald tree boa. Because there wasn't very many of them on YouTube. And I started making a few friends and getting a few subscribers. And little did I ever, ever dream that I would have almost half a million hits on my channel. Yeah, I'm like 12,000 views away from half a million. That's incredible. So thank you for watching. I have like 1,800 subscribers. And, um, you know, I feel guilty that I don't always get to watch all of your videos. So please forgive me. I've just got a lot of work to do in the reptile room. You know, my, my babies come first and then entertainment comes second. And in the last few weeks, I've had a lot of personal things going on. Um, I've had a lot of company from out of town. And uh, we've had a death in the family. So it's kind of been like a little uphill downhill for me so um anyhow things are okay right now and um at least for me they're getting they're getting better for me um so i guess i'll get started with the show and stop rambling let me go ahead and get my list for the week where is that oh, there we go okay questions and comments of the week first question is from pagan 140 do you think you will get any colubrids like corns milks king snakes or rat snakes well, while all of those snakes are lovely, and I love almost any animal that moves, I don't anticipate getting one of those soon. They're not really one of my main interests, but to all of you that keep those, great job, you know. I love them. They're, they're gorgeous. All the animals, they've got good colors, you know, but they're just not something that interests me. But if you keep them, more power to you. Okay, second question is from... Pace M2000, and he says, I need your advice, Jason. I currently have three ball pythons. What's next for me? Well, I really want to get a bow of some sort, something that will get a bit bigger than my ball pythons. I just can't figure out what would be the best choice. Is there a type of boa that is better, tamer, and easier to handle? Okay, I'm going to put this down for a moment. Okay. Um... Yeah, I mean, the basic choice that's going to come to almost everyone's mind when they hear this is a red tail boa. So you could definitely get one of those. They're pretty tame. You almost never see an aggressive one. They're pretty easy to handle. 
but they do get kind of big. You know, if you get a female, you're going to be looking possibility of 9 to up to 12 feet, which is pretty rare, but it could happen. And if you get a male, you're thinking 7 to 8 foot average, but of course they could get larger up to 9 feet or so. So, um, yeah, let's let's look at a red tail bow and see what you think, okay? Let's bring out Lucy. Okay, this is Lucy. She is a red tail boa. She's got a lot of high pink blushing, which is not super common, so, but she's pretty normal looking other than that. And she's about three and a half feet, maybe pushing toward four. She's a great eater, she's very friendly, and she's pretty easy to handle. So, um, here you go. Lucy? Lucy? She's like, I ain't kissing you. Well, you're the one with rat breath, sweetheart. But anyhow, this is um, a normal red tail boa. They make great pets. But if this is not enough spice in your life, let's try maybe an albino. Ah, there we go. Uh, this is Morgana. And she's an albino boa. And she's really cool. She's got like the really bright red tail. And uh, her pattern is not as intense as it was when she was a baby. And she's growing extremely fast. She's like over 500 grams now. Um, she's probably like two and a half feet long. And, um, you know, very calm, sweet, same thing as this, you know, good personality, make great pets, and it's a little bit, you know, I guess, uh, different to look at than your average ordinary red tail boa, so if you want something, uh, a little different, but, uh, maybe you should try this. And if she's not enough spice for you, how about this? Ah, there we go. This is a sun glow, um... And you can see that the coloring, hopefully you can see, the coloring on her pattern is more intense. Her saddles are very, uh, very, uh, a salmon color. And, uh, she's very gorgeous. I mean, either, any of these choices make excellent pets. And, uh, they're all friendly, you know, because I wouldn't put them up in my face because I'm not a big fan of pain if they weren't friendly. So, but, anyhow, here they are, all three of them right up front for you. So, uh, maybe you could try one of these, you know. Depends on your budget. Of course, the normal is going to be the cheapest. The albino is going to be the next least expensive. And the most expensive is going to be the sun glow. So, um, yeah. Um, check into these and see what you think. Hi, babies. You guys are all so sweet. Yes, you are. There, I got a kiss from you, Lucy. How about you? Morgana? There you go. Come here. Aw, oh, there you go. So I got a kiss from all of them. Okay, we're going to put these back. Three is a little hard to handle, even for me. So uh, we'll put these back and... Okay, maybe you like those, hopefully. Um, but if you want something a little bit more of a challenge with that requires a little bit more maintenance, you could try Rainbow Boa. They have incredible colors to them. Um, it's really hard to pick up the color play or the iridescence on camera. But in person, you can see, like, rainbows radiating all over them. And it's really incredible. You can get some with more orange or more red, or sometimes they're just kind of brownish. But, you know, they all pretty much have rainbows, so it just depends on what you're looking for. But I'll show you a couple of those. Okay. Um, this one is Valentine over here. And this is Venus. Um, she's got more of the orange, peachy colors to her. Now it's nighttime, so their colors are not as vibrant. Um, and uh, Valentine is really starting to get large. She's more red. And um, now these guys are pretty tameable. You know, some people say they're a little nippy, but I've never had a problem with my rainbow boas. And a great breeder for them is Will Bird. His website is ectotherms.net. Email me if you want me to send you a link. But um, she's really gorgeous. And uh, she's about maybe going on two and a half to three feet and uh, she's gorgeous too and she's going on like three and a half to four feet um, now these are more active to handle they're uh, they do calm down after a while some of them anyway they're a little bit more of the runner top snake where you really have to pay attention to them probably not going to be sit going to be able to sit down and watch an entire movie with them wrapped around your neck um, but that's okay because their beauty is well worth a little bit more extra maintenance. Now they have to have super high humidity so um, make sure you read up on them before you get an animal you know either way no matter what you're getting. 
if you're getting a cat, you should know how to take care of it before you get it. Of course, you will, but um, there we go. That's that's for anybody watching saying, hey, that's cool. I'm going to get one of those and not have a clue what to do with it. But um, here is uh, Venus and Valentine. And they're super, super sweet. I love my little rainbow girls. Anyhow, maybe you'll like a rainbow bowen. Now, they get about five to six feet, you know, no matter if you get a male or a female. And so they get a little bit bigger than ball pythons, and a little bit more solid built than ball pythons, so, you know, but not over the top. So, there you go. Um, there's uh, Venus and Valentine going toward the light. No, don't go toward the light. Come back to Daddy. Just kidding. Okay, let's put these guys up. Okay, so there you go. Maybe a rainbow boa, red tail boa, albino boa, sun glow. Take your pick. Good luck to you, though. And uh, let's see, where did my list go? Let me just snap it right back up. Okay, there it is. Okay, next question is not really from one person in particular because I've had the questions over and over and over again. Um, but it's kind of like three questions into one about the eggs and the mommy. Uh, the albino Burmese python eggs. People want to know how are the eggs doing, how long till they hatch, and how is mommy buttercup? Excellent questions. Okay, unfortunately two of the eggs expired. They did not make it. They died within a week of being laid. So even though only one of them looked kind of crappy and that was one that went, um, another egg did, did not make it. I have one other egg that looks a little iffy, but all the rest look really good. And they're like 25 days into incubation, so. And how long till they hatch? Well, they were laid at the 1st of April. She laid on April the Fool's Day. Tricky little snake. Um, so they should hatch toward the end of May, possibly even the 1st of June. So I should have baby albino Burmese pythons coming up soon. And how is Mommy Buttercup? Well, she's doing pretty good. She was really thin after laying the eggs, which was to be expected. And she was really tired and really, really worn out. So, I wanted to get something back in her system because she had not ate in a couple months and she was really thin. And uh, so I started with a smaller meal. I gave her a double extra large rat, which weighed just about a pound, which was quite a bit smaller than the medium rabbits that she had been used to. But she ate it. She did take her dear sweet time. It took her like 20 minutes to eat the rat. She was that worn out. But within just a couple of days, she started like getting up around the tank and crawling around and she was quite active after just the one meal. I waited a week and then gave her two of those. And uh, she put on some more weight. Gave her two the next week and so on and so on. But she's still not back up to rabbits yet. Just playing it safe. Going to build her back up slow. But uh, she's doing really good. She's already shed after giving birth. So her scales look really good again. And we're actually going to go check on her. Now, i got to warn you. This is just going to be a little bit sad, but she's okay, trust me. Let's go see her. Okay, here we are with Buttercup. She just sits in front of the laptop all day long watching the video of her with her eggs. You can see her with her eggs on the screen. And she just sits here for hours on hours and hours, and she has her little tissue so she can wipe her little tears away. Buttercup, don't be shy. We've all been there. Oh, you need a tissue. Yes, you need a tissue. There you go. You just go right over to him. Here's you another one. She just keeps watching and watching and watching him. She's like, those are my babies. Those are my babies. And that fucking homo took them away from me. Come back, eggs. Come back. Where did they go? No, they're not behind there, buttercup, sweetheart. They're not behind there. She keeps looking behind the laptop like, where are those eggs? I can see them. I just can't find them. But there's Mommy Buttercup. We're not getting a very good picture, so you can't really see her color too good. But um, this comforter is really blue, and it kind of looks green. But we've embarrassed Buttercup. But you can see her body has filled out quite a bit. And uh, we'll kind of lay her down. She's getting fatter. She's getting a lot of her weight back. She's still going to take a couple months to recover. But there's Mommy Buttercup. Now we've embarrassed her and she's going to 
leave. She's like, okay, I'm done watching. I can't take any more. Buttercup, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to steal your eggs. I just wanted you to recover quicker, okay? Yes. I did, baby. I did it for your own good. Anyway, let's give a big hand to Mommy Buttercup, okay? It'll be all right. Well, Buttercup is a little sad about losing her eggs, but she'll be all right. You know, we're taking very good care of her and the eggs. Okay, new members of the reptile community. First one has had an account for a while that recently put up a video of his bearded dragons, which is a really good quality video. You can see them really up close and they're beautiful animals. And you can tell this little young man is very passionate about his bearded dragons. Um, so, I'm going to give a shout out to the Mr. Mahdi. I'll put a link in the sidebar to his page and please check out his video and say hello to him and welcome him. And the next one is Jared's Python 9. Of course there'll be a link to his home page on the sidebar. Please go to his channel, check out his video as well. He has a video up of his like snake collection. He has like three or four ball pythons and three or four boas. And the video quality is not like 100% perfect. It's a little dark in some parts. But you definitely get an A plus for effort because it is hard to make a video with that many snakes, getting them in and out of the enclosure, and be as well-spoken and as energetic and enthusiastic as you were in your video. So definitely check out his page. And favorite video of the week, okay? I didn't have time to watch a lot of videos, so I was just on there today, and a video popped up from Prehistoric Pets, and I watched it, and it was really awesome. It shows this huge retic, the largest one in their collection, I don't know, it's probably like 25 feet or so, and it probably weighs 300 pounds, but it took three grown men to pick it up, and they were still having a difficult time handling it. So, I just want every one of you out there that's considering getting a large snake like a Burmese python, reticulated anaconda, so on, please go watch this video. They are gorgeous animals, and if you have the time and the space for one, hey, go for it, but you need the experience too. And if you're thinking, well, I'll learn, just watch the video and see how big it is. And then you'll be like, whoa, maybe I do need to think about this a little bit more before I plunge into such an enormous snake. Not that there's not millions of great, responsible, large monster snake keepers out there. And I commend you for that, absolutely. But just think about it and watch the video. There'll be a link right here and in the sidebar. Okay. I'm done with this. Okay. Um, that's the end of the show, pretty much. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to have another Triple S video up soon for you. Don't know when that'll be. Let's hope that Medusa's eggs come in soon. And um, thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. See you later.